I'll get straight to it on this one. Caitlin Clark is revolutionizing the WNBA with both her style of play and the amount of attention and money that she's bringing to the league. All of this growth is causing some modern problems. Modern problems require modern solutions. I pointed out some of the potential free agents and draft picks that I would like to see them go after, some of the re-signings that they should or shouldn't make possibly with their expiring contracts. But as some of you guys so astutely pointed out, until something changes at the top, none of these other changes really matter. You're 100% right. I've been avoiding the topic. I knew I was going to get to it at some point, but here we are. All right. Let me just pull up, pull up a few of the GMs around the WNBA, not to mention other leagues, but just the WNBA. All right, let's start with the Aces. Back-to-back champions in the midst of trying to put together a third right now. So they're doing something right. And this team has been put together by Natalie Williams, 53 years old. She is as fresh faced as ever. That's the Las Vegas Aces gym right there. Let's take a look at the Sun. They're also at the top of the league. Darius Taylor, 45 years old. Looks like he could lace them up, get out there with the team and practice if need be. How about the Liberty? Jonathan Cole. Happy birthday, young man. Got him out there in his sneakers. <laughs> They've got Ellie the Elephant, who everybody loves. They're doing things right over there. How about the Storm? Talisa Ray, 35 years old. That's a winning franchise. Is it Rhea? Did I just butcher her name again? Sorry, you guys. Either way, she's 35 years old. All right. I mean, now let's let's just take a look at I don't know the Fevers GM. <laughs> let's take a look at the Fevers GM. Lynn Dunn, 77 years old, you guys. One of these things is not like the other. All right, I just went through the top of the league. I can keep going if you want through the bottom of the league, but if you're familiar with the GMs, then you know it's not going to change much, all except for one, which we'll get to. But Lynn Dunn, that, that's the GM here. Huge age gap between her and the rest of the GMs. Well, not all of the rest. There's another one she has something in common with here. Washington Mystics. Mike. Mr. Mike here is 73 years old. Not only are they both the oldest GMs at the bottom of the league, but they both were former coaches for the teams that they GM for. And they're both using a lot of nepotism as Mike's child, Eric, is now the coach for the Mystics. And we all know that Lynn Dunn, she's pretty much handpicked, which all the GMs handpicked their coaches, of course, but she stayed within her coaching tree. Her coaching, um, her coaching assistants is who she's given a head coaching jobs to. She hasn't reached outside of that at all. And they haven't reached outside of Erica Wheeler and so on and so forth. A lot of nepotism going on there. There you go. I want to make sure I'm looking at you guys now. So, yeah, there's a lot of nepotism going on there, but it's not serving either franchise well at all. The results speak for themselves, even though they've played pretty well the last 10 games, both teams. Still, something needs to change going forward. Big picture. Even if you look over at the NBA, the same people who own the um, Indiana Fever, they own the Pacers. Look at their GM. He's not 77. I can go all, through all the leagues. You're not going to find many GMs this age unless they're legendary. It's a new time. I hate to sound like an ageist especially as somebody who does a lot of things that somebody my age possibly shouldn't be doing. But we just have to keep it real. We need some modern solutions. Look at the Valkyries GM, Ohima Nyanen. She was just playing college basketball in 2010. So she's more in touch with what's going on right now. She can relate to the players a little bit better. Not that that's necessary for a GM so much to relate, but still, I just think that they need to get some modern solutions going on around that franchise all across the board and it starts at the top obviously they're not going to change ownership but it starts at the top with the gm so that's my thought with that that's my pitch ageism is <laughs> ageism is my pitch i guess i'm sorry i hate to do it but yeah we need we need a fresh face around there man in the front office and that's really all it is to it so that's my pitch, you guys. A combination of ineptitude and ageism. Sorry. <laughs> I, I know there's laws against that, but it's, she's not getting it done. We just ran, we just ran Biden out for the same thing. 
We got to come on down. You got to go too. Toss, throw in a hat. Don't make us do it. Don't make the man fire you. Obviously, he has a soft spot for you. Toss it in, man. It's time to call it one. That's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As always, you guys know I'll be down there responding to the ones that I can't get to. I can't get to all of them, of course, but I'll be here watching the Olympics responding to most of them or some of them. So, yeah, I want to see what you guys think. And I know that a lot of you want to see Christy Sides gone, but I don't think that Lynn Dunn should be the one in position to even make the decision on the new coach. So, first things first, done is done. At least that's what I think. Like I said, tell me what you think. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, peace. All right, we got swimming at 4 a.m. And then Simone Biles, Jordan Childs, and the squad comes on at 4.40 a.m. I don't know which one I'm more excited for. But that Spain versus Italy, women's beach volleyball, great game. Muto bello. Is that how you say it? That's probably not how you say it. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> Muto bello. I did it again. Chrissy Sides, out. Lynn Dunn, out. Hmm? That covers it.